Hey guys, what's going on? In this video, I'm working on this 2004 Dodge Stratus. Uh, this one's got a coolant leak back around the strut tower area there, back by the firewall. Um, I've actually had a chance to already take a look at this one and determine that it is this coolant tube. The, uh, the official name for this part is the heater hose coolant pipe assembly, something like that. Um, so I do have this aftermarket one from Dorman. I'm sure you can get the uh, OE one but uh, this one alone is about a hundred bucks uh, at least. So uh, I'm gonna show you real quick here. Uh, I can put the camera back in the uh, corner there by the firewall and I'm gonna get my pressure tester on the coolant jug there. And it really doesn't take much to get it to start leaking, maybe one or two pumps and you can see it coming out. But uh, let me set that up for you and uh, show you what we're, what we're looking at. So you can see that coolant's coming out of there pretty good. Uh, what I've done here is the pipe is more or less arranged how it sits in the car. So it actually wraps around the back of the firewall, back to where the heater core connections are, right, right back there. Um, that's where this hose would go, or the hose would attach here. And it looks like our leak, as we come back around towards the strut tower, is right around this bracket here. I know it's you can't see it the greatest with the bag on it, but I'll show you again once I take it out of the bag. Um, so yeah, it looks like it's rusted out right around this bracket area. So looking at this hose or this pipe, we can see that it wraps around the side of the engine bay here by the frame rail. It does tee off and come up here. I think that goes up to the coolant reservoir or maybe one of these hoses here. And then this one comes back down and attaches to a hose down there. So not the easiest to get to. I know I've done one of these back in the day. I can't remember exactly what all is involved with doing it. But I know for sure at least all this stuff's going to have to come out of the way and uh, kind of weasel our way in there and pull the tube up out of the way. So I'm going to start taking stuff apart here. I'm going to see how far I can get before I have to cheat and look at uh, service information. But um, yeah, let's get access to the pipe and we'll go from there. Of course, first thing I did was I made sure the cooling system was nice and cool before I uh, pulled that cap off. Just for any burns or anything crazy like that. So uh, I see a bunch of bolts sitting here. Attaching everything together. Not really sure what needs to come off first, so let's try with this uh, power steering reservoir and we'll go from there. All right, that was an easy one. And then we'll come down to this. Uh, of course, that's a different size, so let's get these two out of the way for the coolant jug. I believe this is a receiver dryer accumulator. I forget what the AC term terminology are, but we got an 8 mil here. Come on. There we go. That one's out. And we don't have a lot of give in these AC lines because they're hard metal. Uh, there is a bracket up here, so I'm going to take that one off, see if that will give us some flex to work with. Okay, I think the first thing I'm going to try to get out of the way is this coolant jug. I think the other stuff here, we can leave that hooked up to all the various lines. I'm going to undo this clamp here. that hose off looks like we got one more down below I might be able to get to that Let's see if we get lucky here
I've got some access to it. Honestly, what I think I might do first, since we have a fair amount of coolant still left in this jug, and we're gonna be opening the cooling system, I'm gonna see if there's a good way to drain this, maybe down at the radiator, or if I crack one of the lower hoses. So let me do that real quick. All right, so Chrysler was nice enough to give us a drain plug here, or petcock, whatever you wanna call it, on the uh, radiator. I can just barely get my hands on it. There we go, get you guys focused. Let's see. Well, I'm getting lucky, it's turning. Of course, I got a drain pan underneath here, a nice clean drain pan. We're gonna try, see what kind of condition this coolant's in. Maybe we can reuse it. This is kind of a budget repair I'm doing right now. All right, we'll let it drain and do its thing. We'll go. So for some reason, because of the design of this cooling system, this jug is not emptying with the rest of the system. So in the interest of saving time, not making a mess, I'm gonna uh, clamp off this big hose down there and disconnect that clamp that's holding the hose onto the jug. Don't crack the thunder there, it's not my stomach, I promise. So we're gonna go ahead and clamp this hose. Okay, so I've been playing around with uh, moving some stuff around this area and this uh, big radiator hose up here, looks like this is the upper hose. It's kind of preventing me from getting a lot done. So I'm gonna see if I can't slide this clamp off, get this hose out of the way and then everything else can kind of shift over. I'm either gonna make things really easy for myself or really complicated for myself. I'm just gonna pull all of these hoses out of the way because I can't even get to that clamp on that bottom one. Pull this hose out of the way. I can finally get access to this bottom clamp here. It'd be nice if I had the hose clamp tool I used to have access to. Okay, so I wrestled with that uh, hose clamp quite a bit, the pair of vice grips. I really need to get a pair of hose clamp pliers, or uh, they make a special tool. It's got like a cable on it with a little slide that kind of like pinches that together. It's pretty neat to use. But I finally got that out of the way. So I'm gonna pull this hose around, secure it towards the front of the engine bay to get this out of our way. So now with that hose out of the way, you see we have a little more breathing room to work with here. Get this bottle out of the way. And what I'm actually gonna do is grab my uh, vice grip. Let's see here. Yeah, in the interest of saving money, or saving time and um, preventing a spill, since for some reason this tank isn't draining completely, I'm going to take my pair of needle nose vice grips, clamp off this uh, hose coming off the bottle, and then I'm going to try to undo that clamp down there and just pull the bottle and the hose up as one with all the fluid still inside of it. Okay, so I have the hose clamped off of the vice grips, um, and I have the hose clamp off where it attaches to that top little nub that comes off of the pipe. So we're going to see if I can work this off of here. I might have to get my pliers on the hose just to kind of twist it and break it free from the bond it has on the pipe.
Okay, I can feel it starting to starting to wiggle already. Okay, so that's the hose off. Let's be careful not to twist these uh, metal lines too much for the AC. And there's the jug out of our way. Alright, so with that coolant jug out of the way, we have better access to the pipe. I know you guys can't see it from that angle. Uh, but I'll show you in a second, but now I want to get this power steering reservoir because there's a big hose that goes from that back to what I assume is the pump in the back of the motor. So I'm going to see if I can't snake this up out of the way. Maybe hold it in place with our AC hose. And it might seem like I'm being lazy by not disconnecting this stuff and getting it like fully out of the way, but Doing this in the home setting is a lot different than doing it in a shop where I could just disconnect everything, let the fluids kind of go wherever they, they may. Uh, plus, I don't have access to power steering fluid, things like that, very easily. So, more stuff I can keep together, more fluids I can keep in the car. Uh, the, the thought is, at least, unless the stuff keeps getting in my way, is that I'll be saving myself more work in the long run. So, it looks like the only things left to do to free this pipe from the car are to see there's a hose down in there it's not really showing up because it's pretty dark uh, but there's a hose and a clamp down there uh, there's one bolt holding it to the engine bay or i'm sorry the frame rail right there and then we have one more bolt back there in that bracket where it was leaking and then maybe you guys can see it get a better angle here way down tricky to show up way down in there right there that hose clamp has to come off as well that's the very end of that pipe so i'm going to do my best to show you guys this clamp and that bolt um as you can see there's not a lot of room to work with back there so forgive me if i don't show every step of that uh, but i'm going to start with that clamp and then we'll try fishing our hands down in there i really hope i don't have to take that power steering hose off but we'll see if we get lucky So I got that clamp loose. As you can see there, I'm just gonna drop it down onto the pipe. Try to get my vice grips off of here. There's a lot better tools I could be using for this, but I'm just kind of using what I have right now. doesn't want to move. Sorry to jostle you guys around there.
right, there's our hose off. So it looks like the mounting bolt in the front is a 10 millimeter. I'm hoping they stuck with that. In the back one here. Just barely enough room to get my arm in there with a wrench. Let's see if I can get lucky here break it free with the box wrench which I just did good and we'll see if we can work it out by hand all right so I spent about the last 10 I don't know 10 15 minutes trying to get this bolt out for this bracket right here um, even thought about me pulling this clamp out of the way and pulling this power steering hose out but not having the proper tools to get the clamps off made that more pain than it was worth. So basically what I did, stake my arm down where a coolant jug used to be, got a 10 millimeter box wrench on here and basically just turned it a quarter inch at a time or a quarter turn at a time. It's a very slow, painful process and I had to move it back and forth, tighten and loosen for a while there just to kind of free up the rust. But I think I've got to the point now where it feels like it's loose. We can work that out by hand. There's the culprit right there. And I'm hoping if I shake this pipe, yeah, that's looking good. We're free in the back, now I just gotta take off the clamp on the bolt in the front, we should be good to go. So I tried taking off the clamp down here, but uh, funny enough, this bolt here is actually getting in my way, so maybe this is the wrong call, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull this bolt out first, and then we'll see if we got some more room to get to that clamp. Hose clamp off, as you can see here. So let's see, maybe I can break this hose free by hand. Easier said than done. Okay, so I got that line or the hose disconnected down the front here. That wasn't fun just because of uh, where it was located down by the belt there. It's kind of hard to get at it to kind of come at it from the front and the side. And the clamp fought me and it was rusted on, but whatever. We got it done. Um, the only other thing that I didn't show is in the back here, there is a wiring harness that bolts, or not bolts, but uh, pops into that top ear on the pipe. So I did use um, this panel uh, trim popper tool and just pry that right out. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, I've got enough to get this thing out of here. Let's see what we can do. Maybe I'll get this power steering reservoir back down here. Try to give us a little more swinging room. I'm gonna try to pop the front end out first. Bring it on the other side of these hoses. Okay, I got things kind of reorganized here. Power steering reservoirs out of the way. Pull this AC hose off to the side. puzzle. Let's see, maybe pulling this wiring harness out of the way will help us. I'm not really sure. Biggest hang up is just that little crook in the back there trying to get it to clear everything. Forceful here just to get it past 
got a strip tower. But I don't want to get too crazy because of the steering hose there. Maybe we can... Oh, I see what the problem is. The bracket needs to clear the power steering hose. Okay, I think I got a game plan here, guys. We're going to try swinging this around. Yeah, that's looking good. That bracket's clearing the power steering hose. Now, we can just get this wiring harness around that bracket. Clear those brackets past the valve cover. I see part of my problem here that pipe is actually breaking on me as I'm taking it out. There we go, guys. We're victorious. It wasn't pretty pulling that thing out of there, but it's out. That's all that matters. Now I just hope we can get that new one in, especially without this added flexibility that the old line was giving us. Man, you can see, look at that. That is about to just, I could pull that apart right now if I wanted to, but cool. All right, so we know what the problem is. I got the old one out. Let's see if we can get the snake this new one in. Okay, guys. This part I've not been looking forward to, but now, um, yeah, we're going to have to snake this guy back into place and hook everything back up. So this one's a lot more rigid than the last one. And um, yeah, I'm just going to see if I can finagle around this corner and then work it back into place without taking too much paint off of it. So if you were a, a dealership technician that worked on these cars back in the day and I'm not doing this the proper procedure, this is probably going to make you cringe, but we're going to get it done regardless. So let's see if we can Gotta get underneath that hose. Okay, it's our first obstacle is getting started underneath that hose. Our next one's gonna be getting these ears, these little brackets here down into place. Something tells me that power steering hose was supposed to come out of the way before I started this, but I've been wrestling with that. Let's see, maybe start it like this. Ooh, maybe that looks a little promising. I'm gonna play with this a little bit and I'll get back to you guys. Okay, status update. I tried and tried and tried to get that pipe in there with that power steering hose in the way and I just do not see how it was physically possible. So I have gone ahead and pulled off this power steering hose. That clamp was not fun to get to even with all that space back there. Um, but that hose is out of the way. I think and now I should be able to get that pipe in. So let's give it another shot. Alrighty guys, here goes. Pull this wiring harness out of the way. That guy out of harm's way. Okay, that's looking pretty good back there. Let's see if we can get her settled down in the front. Going underneath the AC hose. Through there. Stuck on the cooling hose here. That is pretty much got it right there. Cool. All right, that's the hardest part out of the way is getting that back into place. So uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put the hoses and clamps on first just so I have a little bit of wiggle on that pipe if I need it. 
to get access to things. And then, uh, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and throw everything back together. You guys uh, probably see enough of that. I guess I'm just going to go suffer in silence and uh, cram my hand back in there to get those clamps back on. So I'll meet you back once I have everything back together. If there's anything noteworthy, I'll be sure to pop in along the way. All right, so as you can see, the Stratus is no longer in my garage. I have returned it to the owner. They needed it back pretty urgently, so I was not able to finish filming the last few parts I wanted to. Um, I apologize for that to you guys. I'm going to not do that from here on out because that uh, doesn't make for good watching, in my opinion. But as far as the installation procedure, just the reverse of the disassembly that I showed you guys, really nothing to report, putting it back together. Um, the main thing I can, I can tell you after the fact is you definitely want to take that power steering hose off up front. It'll save you a lot of trouble taking everything apart and uh, getting this coolant pipe out of the engine bay. On the note of the power steering, you're also going to want to top off the power steering fluid level and maybe turn the wheel side to side a few times just to make sure that the uh, any air pockets are worked out of there and that you're good to go with the power steering system. And then, of course, we'll have to top off the coolant level. And I like to run the vehicle for at least 20 to 30 minutes, get it nice and hot, make sure that we got good heat coming out of the heat. Uh, I'm sorry, good heat coming out of the vents. Make sure there's no air pockets stuck in the heater core. And uh, I just top off the surge tank over on the side there with the cap off. Make sure any, uh, see if any bubbles are coming through there. Maybe rev it up a few times just to kind of encourage any air pockets to work their way towards that surge tank. Um, so in the case of this vehicle, we ran it for a while. Everything looked great. I didn't see any coolant leaks afterwards and the coolant levels holding strong a few days later. So customer's happy, I'm happy. Uh, this one is in the books. As you can see, by the time I was all said and done, that pipe was hanging on by a thread and hopes and dreams. So definitely, definitely well needed in this case. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. I appreciate you watching. I hope this video was educational and helpful to some of you. And uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Consider subscribing. Check it out. We'd love to have you. And uh, until next time, take it easy. I'll see ya.